Hey, hello everybody, it's Open Gym. With no jingle. With no jingle this week. But yeah. we do have John Herding. Hi. So that's, How's everyone? That's hey. just as good. Yeah? It's almost as good. I don't know, it feels so empty without the jingle now. I know. I did come just for the jingle. I'm really sorry. Kelly, yeah. can, we have a live studio member today. <laughs> Kelly Shear. We went from an audience to a live studio a member. A live yeah. studio member. <laughs> and Zaz down there, but she didn't want to come up. Uh -uh. I don't know. Yeah. And we had a little problem with our camera. So Nemo. we're going back to our roots. We're working. We're working it out. So we're on the laptop today. We're here with John Herding of the training room. John, welcome to Open Gym. Good to be here. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, that's Jimmy. I'm Steve. Now we know each other. Yes. All right. So John Herding is a doctor of physical therapy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Official doctor and all that. Yeah, I know. You can and call me doctor. Doctor. Doctor John. Doctor, John, yeah. doctor Herding. Um, uh, and I met John. I can't even remember how we met. How do we meet? Fudala. Bob. Ah, Bob Fudala, a former member. We won't say where he's at now. No, <laughs> we won't say no. where he went, but that's okay. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, did you send Bob there when he tore his? Yeah, tore his pec or yeah. something. I think. No other PT clinic would take him. He was one of my first patients, actually, right after I opened. That was when he decided yeah. to warm up with 185. <laughs> well, <That's>... I say <laughs> yeah. this. It's not always the athlete's fault. <laughs> ah, but anyway. Coach has got the athletes, right? We'd like to think so. We try, yeah. but only if they're missing. So anyway, um, so we met John, and then I think – I can't remember how we originally met, though. But anyway, I, I don't know if he mentioned you. Yeah. But I, I guess that's how. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I remember I sent um, Alex to mm -hmm. you, like, on a Sunday. I think he was doing the Open, and we yeah. he was, like, one of our better athletes at the time, and we needed his score. That's right. Uh, for uh, regionals, for our regional score. And we were like, man, this guy's hip is juiced up. Mm -hmm. And we do have a, uh, a collection of, of, of people that we like to refer people out to when they need work or what's beyond our scope, which isn't, you know, that much. You know, somebody – now it's nice where we might have thought about tackling some things or trying to guess or set them out. We can refer out. So, uh, but when they're really good, they're busy. Like you are now. Mm -hmm. You're like a busy guy. Yeah, that's which good. Which is why you're expanding. You have like another associate that works with you now. We do. We had a, another PT in April. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome. Good. So anyway, John Herding is a great physical therapist. One of the reasons I like John is because he's always like you're always going to something new. Like you're always <laughs> going to another clinic, another class. Yeah, you mentioned yeah, yeah. that um, your wife. Is a doctor, right? She's a mm -hmm. pediatrician? She is. All right. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I didn't really know that. I knew she was a doctor, but then another member, you know, it's funny how we all work in the same circles. Yeah. Another member um, mm -hmm. mentioned that, uh, oh, you should meet my pediatrician. She's so great. And oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, Dr. Herding. And that rang a bell to our member. And well, why like, was she wow. trying to introduce you to my wife? Not me. Right. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. They were no, just right. talking. talking. And like, did you know, is John's wife? Yeah, a pediatrician. I said, you know, I'm not really sure, but I know she's a doctor. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, you know, small world, yeah, Westchester, small world is. Westchester. Yeah, absolutely. So it's nice to have somebody like you because one, you work with athletes all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, typically in our experience over the nine years that we've had a gym, when we send somebody like, hey, we're not sure what's going on, you should seek some medical advice, and they'd be like, well, who should we go see? Well, you go talk to your doctor, yeah. and unfortunately, that is not always the best idea, right? right? Because doctors go to doctor school. Not that all doctors are like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, they end up, you know, we Just go to doctor school, yeah. and that's that's then we're done doing doctor school. Stand on top of the newest mm -hmm. stuff, and they're definitely not, you know, working with athletes. Right. So, you know, the old rigmarole that I would always get, in my experience is. And again, this is, you know, not painting all doctors that they're all evil or anything. But it was like, oh, that hurts? Oh, well, don't, use don't do that. Don't do it. Or don't, just stop crossfitting. Or, right. Well, you you're going to, yeah. Gonna, yeah. yeah. So don't work out. Leave it rest for, you know, a few weeks to months. And, like, for people like us, well, that's, like, that's just not going to happen. Right. We're not going to not work out. Not that we shouldn't. Maybe we should avoid that thing or certain movements. But, like, they just give this blanket answer or, like, hey, let's just take some you know, handsets and see how that feels. And then we go down the whole 
insurance train of let's get an x-ray now we have to get an x-ray before we get an mri most mm -hmm. times and they end up referring out anyway right and then by then it's it has been weeks or months yeah. and then we go oh yeah it's not hurting me anymore so now i'm not motivated to go find out what was the original reason that was bothering me. yeah so john tell us about you your training how you got into pt and yeah. then we'll kind of get hit some questions if anybody's watching and they have a question they would like john to answer and we're not answering it, maybe you could chime in there in the comments and maybe we can get John to answer it. So we'll read through that later. So, all right. so John, it's all yours. No, so I was an athlete growing up. Soccer was my main sport. Went on to play um, Division three soccer. Um, from there, two ACL injuries. And I can really say I didn't really train a ton. Um, I was in better shape after school than I was in school. I was a soccer player, you know, soccer players. We don't like to do anything but run, lift, like, um, so played soccer through school, tore my ACL twice, still had a pretty good career. Um, out of school, so degrees in exercise and sports science, um, and wellness promotion. And then, so the two and a half years right after school, I had corporate fitness, personal training, um, kind of got experience in every realm of the fitness world. Right? Which I think is good yeah. for what you were going to do. And like, I was... Grinding like I, I wanted I wanted so bad to personal train on top of the corporate fitness job right away I worked at LA Fitness for like six dollars a session right away just to get clients under my belt. It was terrible um, But when did you find that was like a good learning experience? Of course like I think you guys know this like uh, Especially in our world these these unpaid internships are gold like you have kids now They're taking the first internship in their sophomore year of college then another one junior year and then senior year and they're getting three great internships all unpaid before um, they graduate. It's, it's a huge learning experience for That's, everyone. That sounds great. Um, so for me, that was like my unpaid internship. But but it made, I had to wake up even early. I was taking like 5, 4.30 or 5 a.m. fine just to get there before my 6.30 job in corporate uh -huh. business, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that was, that's a lot of hearts. People love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The harder you work, the more people love it. Um, but anyway, so did that and then worked my way into, it's fine. It's probably, it makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's probably your wife watching. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. Or maybe all the patients that are out there. That you know. Yeah, come in and say hi. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> um, Getting back to what you were saying. Yeah, so from there I knew I was going to go back to P2 school at some point. So I started to build an in-home personal training client base because I knew. So Jamie did. That's yeah, you, you get paid pretty well, well. Right? You yeah. get paid pretty well and you can make your own hours. Right. Very nice. Um so I got into school. Sort of make that Yeah, well it you might decide I don't want money right now. Or, <laughs> yeah. or, or very early or very late. Yeah. Oh well I was we'd have so I went to Widener University for peace school. Yeah. We'd have an eight AM class and I'd drive. I lived in Chester my first my first year. I'd drive to Montgomery County, train one person and then drive back. Because yeah. I need the money. Right. Like That's what I was school, doing like, before, you know, when we first started the gym. For the gym, yeah. I had a client out in Bryn Mawr. Yeah. So I would drive all the way out to Bryn Mawr, and it was like a 45-minute drive. Yeah. One client, uh, drive all losing, the way back. Losing money, and I had a two-door Honda Civic, and I'd keep 350 pounds of kettlebells. Yeah. Like, I thought guys were like, I was going to get pulled over because I was going to wonder, like, what's in my trunk? Your, what, like, a body. That's funny because <laughs> when I was starting personal training in home, I had a Honda Civic, and I would keep this – Big stability ball in the front seat. <laughs> yeah. you, you do it with that you can. Face on it? Thing. Yeah, I should have put a face on the wig. You, you totally do what you can when you just start now. But but those are valuable hours I've logged. Like maybe I'm losing money or just making enough just to pay like a cheap rent in Chester. Uh, but looking back, like you learn how to do a lot with a little, and you gain valuable Absolutely. coaching experience. Yeah. Right. Because I because I, I graduated undergrad in '06, and there were no like strength and conditioning gyms. Like if you're looking at traditional strength and conditioning. Cressy is open this school, time. maybe, yeah. or right, some very specialized, like an Eric Cressy school or school of speed or strength and conditioning thing. Exactly. And then CrossFit was just getting started around that time, like 2006. Yeah, right. Like, really so there was like no gyms, right? No you're, no you're, taking, yeah. you're taking workouts off the main page. And, you know, yeah. you're just seeing what the guys in Afghanistan are doing on their tanks. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that looks good, Murph. Yeah, let's do it. Right. <laughs> you know, pull ups off the. You know, barrel into the house or whatever. Yeah, totally. So you knew about CrossFit before I did. Yeah, so I was introduced to it by Barry at Generation. I think I told you before. Um, because we were working together in corporate fitness. And then he's like, John, you got to check this out. And we started getting like getting into it. Yeah. Um, so I was CrossFitting 
back then more than I have in the past five years, but it gave me an early introduction into CrossFit and, and what it's kind of become through the last 10, 11, 12 years, right? Yeah. And it's really taken a mind of its own, which is awesome. Probably in the last four to five years, it's been. Yeah, I mean, when was the first game? 12? The 08 was the first oh, okay. real first game at a ranch, at a room, at a ranch yeah. right? And then, but they knew, you know, going markets. back and you listen to those guys, uh, Dave Castro and those other HQ guys, like early on, they were like, they knew, because Aromas is actually Dave Castro's family's ranch. Oh, yeah. And they knew that the second time that they held them, because I think they did them like more unofficially in 07. Mm-hmm. Um, so on 08 was like, 08 was like the first one or whatever. And then, uh, but regardless, it was like they knew that all these people showed up, that they were going to have to have some kind of vetting process mm-hmm. to be like, we can't. Can't go this many people yeah. here at my family's house. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, then in like the year, the next year, I think, was they decided to just try and yep. do the Olympic first time. So that's pretty, that's pretty, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, um, so then going through PT school, like I started taking courses, like I did my USAW cert, I did the FMS stuff. So on top of classes, I was doing like all this reading outside. Like, sometimes I had to pull myself back in from outside reading to mm-hmm. study for the test I had the next morning. I was just more interested in the strength and conditioning yeah. side of it. And it's obviously a gap in the physical therapy world. Like there, there's a lot of PTs that don't understand strength and conditioning, or CrossFit or, you know, general teaching squat patterns or hip hinge patterns, like the basic fundamental foundational human movement, right? Why do you think that is? Has so, caught on yet, maybe? No, I mean, so so PT school, you're, everybody's learning. I actually lectured on that yesterday at Weiner, but everybody's being taught to take a test, right? A test that's based on research that's 10 years old, right? right? Um, and the main concern, just like any school, professional school, is you, you want your numbers of people taking and passing the test. Right? Sure. Because then you're like, hey, look what a great job we did at teaching you this material. Right. We have a 98 first pass rate on the PT licensure. That's pretty, you can market that really well, right? Um, so you're being taught to take, you're really being taught a generalized education to be safe in all settings, whether you're in a hospital, outpatient, are traumatic brain injuries to take a test. Which is good. I mean, the big, great. the big basis of, yeah. I think, medical care is do no harm. Exactly. Right? Um, because if we're, we're, I think, if you agree, that it's still a guessing game. Like, when it comes down to treating somebody, when they come to you like, hey, I'm sick, not you, you're, yeah. you're not a doctor, doctor, but like, yeah. hey, I'm internal medicine or whatever, hey, I'm sick, they are, you know, going like, all right, let's figure out. It could be a gazillion different things. That's a technical term, for gazillion. And then it, let's cross off. All right, we know it's definitely not the plague. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like we can cross off this list of things, and we're narrowing down our focus, and that helps to narrow down our treatment. Yep. So to me, that sounds like it's one big giant experiment, mm-hmm. right? Which I think. Do you agree with that or? Yeah, everybody. So for the most part. everybody's an N of one, right? So right, it, you you have to whether describe a physician, that. I've heard that come up. Like now, it's funny that you say that because I must have read or have heard that term yeah. N of one for like five times now in the past two weeks. So your low back pain is different than Jimmy's low back pain is different from her low back pain, even though it might be all on the right side. Right. Like it might still be a different cause, and there's there's all these other environmental factors, psychological factors movement factors, orthopedic, musculoskeletal, there's all these different factors that may go into right low back pain, which makes a difference between all three. Right. So while you might have these standardized protocols that work on 80% of the people, right, right, and maybe it gets them out of pain, which is easy to get people out of pain, but how do you, like you alluded to earlier, how do you correct movement dysfunction to make so sure that they don't see me in three more months? Right. Like you, rest cures which everything. Which is sort of counterintuitive, right, because your business is to treat people, yeah. right? But, so now... There's the, you know, there's the business side of medical practice of helping people, and then there's the, well, I just I want to help people. There's the feel good, hug them all. I want to, yeah. have, you know, I so it's really as a doctor, I want to heal you, mm-hmm. whatever kind of doctor you are, and never see you again. It's their job right. to put ourselves out of business. Right. Is the way I look at and it. And that's tough, right? right. Um, and it's just all how you choose to value your business, and then you know how you want to market yourself. So I think it speaks a lot because I see uh, I see how you treat people personally, like firsthand, you know, on myself or that I've got to experience it. And with our clients and members, like your your trusted person, send people to. Thank you. And a lot of I know 
uh, when we hear about what I call secondary or tertiary medical practices, which I would like classify, you know, like not my primary care physician or a specialist, an orthopedist or a surgeon, um, and they go, they hear, you know, a chiropractor or, you know, even a nutritionist or a physical therapist or whatever, and they go, oh, well, is this guy going to try and, you know, can he fix me in one visit or do I need these eight visits because he's selling me the yeah. eight visits kind of thing? Well, you always hear about the chiropractor. Right. Who, hey, I've got to go back three times a week for right. we got to put you on this protocol. Yeah. And not that in some instances that might not be the right thing to do, mm -hmm. yeah. but we, 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 I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, and I always see how you are like, Hey man, I, I treated you in two or three things. Like that's, you're good. You're good to go. I don't need to see you again. And people are all, I think what I hear and what I felt was like, wow. Okay. That's, well, I think that's cool. We need to, we do have to do that appropriately, but it's sure. our job to empower people to be able to like Kelly Strat has a good message where people should be able to take, uh -huh. you know, care of themselves, provide basic maintenance. Right? We used like to have it on the back wall yeah. back then, but it yeah. peeled Handstand off. push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> we sweat, the heat, we just took it off. cold. Yeah. Right? They peeled off the back wall, right? And so but, we're big believers in that, which yeah. is why, you yeah. know, I think we align in our philosophies. With um, so, so I think, you know, I, I, you definitely, it's easy to get people out of pain. And, and I live in a, um, a jaded world because I have a very healthy, like, for the most part, healthy population. I treat 100% athletes that are motivated. So, you know, I realize some of the things I say, like, might not apply to different settings. Sure. Um, but they're also going to come see you guys. They have a better relationship with you guys than they do with me. They've been coming to the gym for three years. Yeah. And they'll, they'll come to the gym for, with you for three years, three days a week, and then they get hurt, and they see me three times. So you need to then establish a good relationship with coordinated care. You say, hey, Steve, you know what? This is what I see in this spot. This is what we've done in PT. This is how you can support them continuing to work around their shoulder pain while supporting the healing process, right? right? And, and we love that. And I know you've spoken a couple of times on people that have come back from injury and they're yeah. like, hey, you know, do this or do that. Or, you know, and then having trust, different. like, in those relationships where I trust you guys to then progress them appropriately. Like, if, you know, and this goes for every profession. There's some PTs that are better than others, some physicians, some sure. CrossFit trainers, like, every – every profession and you just need to find the ones that you trust and you work well with. Um, and to that end being, being, you know, CrossFit didn't help me lose weight. Well, maybe it was the program in that specific gym or, right. you know, P I tried PT. It didn't work for me. Right. We hear that. Maybe you should try to find a different, different right person. Day. Right. Like, so, um, I, I think just having the relationships with the right people that have the right ideals and understand that, you know, the client or patient always comes first. Yeah. There's what, they're what drives business. Um, and and when they know that you care, then you know they'll really they'll stick with you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that way with anything. Like you build a relationship. That's what you're just talking to another guy who or another client today said the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about relationships. Yep. Um, so that's cool. So getting back to, uh, I think we kind of jumped off there about yeah. your education and you know you, you got through PT school. Yep. And then what happened? Um, got through PT school, went right to, um, I had a job before I graduated at a facility that really did a good job of blending strength and conditioning, traditional and physical therapy in Cherry Hill. So um, living in Westchester, for me, the opportunity was- And that was, was the training room? It was the training room and the velocity strength and conditioning in Cherry Hill. Um, there are no other clinics in the area doing that where they, you know, we had, I mean, it's still there, but um, 20,000 square feet of strength and conditioning space with the turf, the track, the three platforms, the three. It's like cool. Um, yeah, it was all that. <laughs> um, Got all the cool toys. Yeah. But then they had sports med, a sports med physician in there, yeah. um, and Eagles podiatrist. So really trying to create the coordinated team, also massage therapists. They're the only place in the area doing it. So I commuted for three years between Westchester and, and there just to, um, because I wanted to be in that setting. Um, like a setting that you don't often find in a, in a private, um, private way. Um, then I had my son and opened up a similar facility in Garnet Valley um, where we still have access to 5,000 square feet of gym, 20,000 square feet of just indoor turf space, and my 1,500 square foot. And where's that? You can tell everybody where that is. We'll put links in the, yep. in yeah. the comment section when we post it. Yeah, yes. Garnet Valley. Garnet Valley. Yeah. yeah. So about 15 minutes, 20 minutes from here, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that far. It's just far enough to be kind of a pain. Yeah, it's like yeah. 20 minutes drive from here. 
So, but there's back roads. Like if you go West Town Road and kind of meander through, to, no one's gonna take it. If you say, I mean, you should. <laughs> if, you, if you say so. Um, well, I was just up there. Uh, what a couple months ago? Yeah. Got some dry needling done. Thought I was gonna die. Dry needling to me. Now I understand it's not not all things work for all people, right? Everybody has different uh, response to care and treatment. But man, uh, like the range of motion that dry needling mm. gave me back in my shoulder, just that one treatment, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I can touch my shoulder blade now, I was like behind my back. Did it check? The left side did, yeah. the right side started to... Need another set. I need, I definitely yeah. do, yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's one of those things, like, oh yeah, yeah. But I also haven't been like doing, I was doing a, a, a different program for a while, and I'm off of that, but whatever. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody out there cares. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So. The other cool thing is you have all the toys down there. Yeah, the Garnet toys. Valley training room. You have like mm -hmm. slide board and yeah. all those little light, you yeah, know, neuromuscular speed conditioning, all kinds of toys you brought up we here. Sleds, barbells, Indian clubs, Indian clubs, yeah, all versa climber. I heard sauna. Another, yeah, got sauna. some infrared sauna. Yeah. Um, and if you ever don't want to be down there, you know we have room up here, upstairs here across the rest of the to. Uh, <laughs> Start that integrated healthcare. That's right. Type yeah. Thing going on up here, right, Kelly? Wouldn't that be nice? You're gonna have to drive all the way to Garden Valley. You could just <laughs> get help right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, what do you think are the what's the biggest injury you think you see? Um, just typically, like across the board. If there was like one thing you could fix. Like tell people like your one bit of advice to athletes, whether they're doing, doing CrossFit or any kind of strength and conditioning, something they're ignoring, paying attention to, something that could just improve everybody across the board right now. What would it be? One thing. So I think trunk position. Putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, trunk position. That I kind of knew what you were going to say. <laughs> was that it? It was. Yeah. It was going to be like postural or trunk position. Yeah, that I have reading and all that stuff. Well, so I, th I think you look at. Um, I'll see. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so think about the foundation of a house, right? Everybody yep. has this great foundation, um, whatever it is. Helen, um, jo Joey Schaefer, it's your internet, not ours this time. <laughs> she asked if the internet was jumpy. I nope. Said, not ours. Ours is good. No, we're not on the Mevo, so everyone just right. relax. There's nothing to do with the Mevo. Well, <laughs> this is on Wi-Fi. It's not jumping around. The Mevo was. Listen, stop blaming the freaking camera, bro. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's always <laughs> something that's something else. Um, no, so I, I, critical, John. That's what I gotta do it all the time. I, I don't know how to do it. That's like one thing. Hey, it's the, it's the, it's throws the whole train off the track. Yeah. We used to be twice. We had issues. <laughs> We're now back to our roots. No problems. All right, no problems. Um, the picture. It's all right. 1080p. It looks okay. Yeah, yeah it looks great. great. Yeah. Um, so tr trunk position, foundation, right? So if you don't have a solid foundation in your house, things. Or collapse, baby. Yeah, not working as well. Um, so it's a combination. So thinking about a rib cage and a pelvis that are kind of that foundation for your shoulder girdles and your hip girdles, right? So if you don't have a trunk or I'm wearing girdles, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you don't have really bad joke. these rib cages and you pelvises, have. I'm just trying to talk. <laughs> um, it's got some jokes. What jokes? I love it. Um, but if you don't if you don't have those in solid position, solid with a solid foundation and stability through your foundation, everything else is going to get thrown off, right? I think in traditional medicine is is really just thinking about you know your shoulders, you know how you know they, they might round forward or whatever, but they're they're not taking into account maybe a torso position or rib cage is dictating how that sits. Right, they're just you know retract your shoulders, retract your shoulders, get them back. But you know, is that flaring a rib cage? Then it then throws you off for an overhead lift, particularly in cross. Right? Um, so if you can keep a solid foundation of, of trunk position and stability, that's going to serve you wonders. And like whether you're squatting because you have hip congruency or um, lifting overhead because then your shoulder girdles are congruent. And the body is just a mechanical system. Sure, right. and one piece requires and a lot of body awareness. Like of you have to really be in tune with yeah. everything that's happening. Um, so you know, we, you guys, I'm sure, have used this analogy. Like, why are you going to drive a car 100 miles an hour with four line? 
Like, you don't buy the Lamborghini and then your wheels shake in. Yeah. Like doing this. Like, yeah, go faster. But people <laughs> people do it all the time. Right? Absolutely. So, and here we see it all the time. We always get it to like, like, hey, scale things back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The clock is just a tool. It's not the whole, you know, point of, of what we're doing for function, things like that. What would be the one thing then, um, or what could be some things that you would prescribe to somebody in 10 to 15 minutes it's like a day general, yeah. to, to fix that problem? So I think if, you, if you're able to get a good... I know we're painting some big, broad brush strokes here. Of course. But, um, but if you get, so sagittal plane is like your front to back, right? Right. Um, it's CrossFit. We're doing that. CrossFit's like all sagittal, day, like everything, right? Of sagittal. It's frontal plane stuff yesterday. Sure did. But, but that's and where. some transverse plane. <laughs> that, that's where like in your CrossFit athletes and your sprinters, like these people that are strictly sagittal front to back motion, if you hit a transverse or a frontal plane, you immediately increase performance and bulletproof them. Right? So we're talking about yeah. in the sagittal plane, right? We're moving this way. Up and down, and then frontal and transverse plane. We're talking about transverse rotation. Turning, so if you did the workout yesterday. The lateral box jumps. Yep. That's your, right, that's that's your jumps. frontal plane. Yep. And then those Russian twists we did. That's your transverse. Exactly. Um, and you want to train all three planes of motion in, in a good program. All day, every day. Yeah. Because it helps performance. It helps prevent injury. And that's how we function. Exactly. And um, so going back to that, you want to be able to control your sagittal plane and your torso to prepare it for frontal and transverse plane motion, right? So if you can get a good gluten hamstring driven posterior pelvic tilt, so tilting your pelvis underneath you, right? And then you can get a good exhale to get a rib cage down so you're stacked, then you're money. And then if you can carry that over. So I understand what that means. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy does. Kelly, uh, maybe, maybe. And we have a new audience member, Derek. Woo, hey, Derek. So we're up to two now. <laughs> we have two audience members now. <laughs> yeah. So what would that look like for an actual exercise? Yeah, so my, my go to. Glute bridges, what are we talking about? So, glute bridges are something that you could use for that. My go to is that 90 90 position that we've seen a lot where um, you, you have someone lying their back, you put their hips, knees directly over their hips, and their feet on a wall. Okay. So, hips and knees are 90 degrees, and then your torso is flat, right? Um, because right away, you put your feet on the wall, and you, you're kind of forced into that posterior pelvic tilt. Right, you get a little. You, right, so, there's some tension there, mm-hmm. and then that. Forces your hips to, to kind of tuck under. Tuck under. Yep. So now you set the bottom part of that that cylinder or system to get stability through your pelvic floor, okay. and you you provide a little tension through your heels, and you get some hamstrings, and you feel some tension, and, and that's the base of it, right? Yeah. And then you take a full exhale to kind of set your ribs down as you tilt a little bit more, and then you can you're solid and you're stacked, and your your joints you can grow in, and that's. For me, that's the great exercise to set the foundation. Do you have a, a video of that or? Yeah, okay. my YouTube. You've done some stuff. You have a YouTube video? With that, for me, yeah. when I was having some hip issues and yeah. some lower back issues. And I, I ask that question because I see a lot of our members, after they've gone to you, they yeah. come back, they're in the back, they're doing the 90-90 <laughs> breathing yeah. and postural <laughs> stuff. I mean, I know that stuff, but, you know, I wanted to, you know, have so, you explain that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put a link to that YouTube video. Uh, on our comment section. Marco. What's up, Marco? Uh, and then people can actually see that a little bit. We do it here, but we can't move the camera around and all that stuff. But um, right, so postural control, right? And I think that links right into with breathing because yep. that's a lot of times what we're not doing right, especially. And I and I think what's labored and things. Then we're, we're we're using other things to breathe, and those yeah. things get tired, and then they're not doing what their primary function is, and. Now it's just one house of cards. One thing is collapsing against the other. Yeah, and then you start to look at the integrated, like how, you know, how, you know, stress. How many people do you know that aren't stressed? Yeah. That's so fun. Is that when Jimmy comes in the room? I know. And I go like this. I strung up. <laughs> Actually, today, when the Mevo wasn't working. You were stressed. Yeah, I was getting like. So, you are you know, you started to use accessory breathing. You are breathing yeah. a little bit heavier, right. you're a little bit quicker. Just breathing. Yeah. Um. But so, so that 90-90 position can be a great prep exercise to get sagittal plane control, but then it can be great, be great recovery because then it helps center your breath again, get full exhales, calm you a little bit after a workout, and from a better position after. Oh, I like that. So a little, yeah. little five recovery. or ten minutes before, a little five or ten after, get into our... I know, I know guys at, NHL, at the NHL level, NBA level, MLS, that are using it as their, their post-game so or their... People are getting paid to actually do stuff. We're yeah. not getting paid to work out. It might be like something we can toss in there it might be worthwhile yeah um, good. yeah I, I mean I, I think and you can see too like instead of um, 
always trying to smash things and mobilize things with bands. If, if you can just promote better position through some of like that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. like you'll see shoulder range of motion improve right away. You'll get 20 degrees with a better position. Yeah. Whereas you might've spent in the past 10 or 15 minutes smashing forcing it, something forcing into a range that you don't have. Yeah. Um, and I it, think that for an athlete, that might be the, the go-to right now. Hey, I'm in a competition. My mm -hmm. shit is jacked up, insert whatever. And right. like, hey, I need to do this mobility drill now to smash or release or force yeah. something that, to happen so I can get through it, even though we probably shouldn't. Well, but I think anything goes in competition. Like if you're if you're at if you're in the games or you're you're doing a one rep max at a, a powerlifting or an Olympic lifting yeah. meet, like you see form go out the window all the time. Sure, it doesn't matter. Right. You're going for a max lift, right? Like, but you don't want that to happen all the time in training because eventually the straw is going to break the camel's back. Right. Right. So you want to train appropriately with load and good Contest. positions. Yeah. And then when you go pull, you in the competition, you're ready to go. I like to use a phrase, and I can't remember where I got it, but, you know, is this a training day or a test day? Mm -hmm. You know, for test day, then maybe we're redlining a little bit. We're allowing things to, you know, get within to reason. That, within reason. Within right, reason, yeah. right? Not, oh, my God, the engine's going to blow up. Um, and then, you know, but most, almost 90% of our time should be, you know, 95% or more probably should be training. Right. So working on getting a better movement, getting better engine stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a thing on a podcast where they were talking about, are we going to train a max lift or are we going to train a technical max lift mm -hmm. where you're only training that lift when the technique is 100% correct? Yeah, like technical proficiency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's really good. Uh, it, like Another thing I just heard yesterday was a uh, Polish guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, he has a program called The Happy Body. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like uh, Tim Ferriss, I think, has talked about him. I can't remember his name. But... Um, he was like, you know, when you hit a when you hit a PR and you have something left in the tank, mm -hmm. then that's fun. Yeah. But if you're like struggling, and I see that happen a lot of times, <clears> especially <throat> with heavy lifts, is like people trying to get, especially like the technical lifts, like Olympic weightlifting, this match the clean jerk, like can't hit it, can't hit it, can't hit it. Well, then maybe we're trying too much to like get really good and have some in the tank, and then it's one. I think it's less injurious. Too, it makes it more fun. Nobody, you know, nobody likes to fail yeah, yeah. millions and millions of times, although I think that's what separates you know, some greater athletes from lesser athletes, like the ability to do that and come back from that and go on. But should we? Just because you can, should we? No, I think it's a good question. Right. John, do you have anything to add about anything? We're going to kind of wrap it up, take care of some housekeeping. but No, I mean, I, I think being more focused with um, your activities, like going back to um, – the, maybe that 90-90 drill gets you in a better position so you don't have to spend 15 minutes smashing and band mobbing for shoulder mobility, right? Um, I think a lot of it, like how many how many 25-year-olds do you guys know that spend 45 minutes to warm up? Um, absolutely zero. Really? I knew so. Yeah. Um, but like yeah, a warm-up, we, we didn't make people warm up like we do in class. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think maybe because here we do spend a good 10 to 15, 15 minutes. minutes. I mean, people do come beforehand and, and, and do some stuff. stuff. So maybe, all right, yeah. I take that back. Well, well I think I, I have people coming into clinic all the time, and, and they're, you know, 25 to 30, and they're like, you know, it takes me a half hour to warm up. 25 years old, like, it shouldn't take you. Yeah, should, like, you need to figure out how to make your warm up more focused so you get bigger bands for your buck, right? right? I'm not spending five minutes here, and, and and if you've been smashing the same area for you know two, three, four, five weeks, and it's not making a change, like it's probably not the thing you need to be doing. Right? And I think that's the one problem with the internet. Yeah, is there's a million coaches out there, there's a million programs and ways you could go, mm -hmm. but nothing beats sitting down with somebody one on one. Hey man, just tell me what to do. It's huge, like. And this it's, is what's worked. And what happened. Find someone to you know, to experiment on yourself too. Like you can't, you have to get to know what you need to do in your warm up yeah. yourself. Yeah, like, I think that leads us all the way back. Like like I said before, like this whole thing, the medical prescription is an experiment. Yeah. Yet you know we kind of because there's so much business involved with you know medical practice, no matter what it is on whatever right. level, that you know the experimentation in the learning process which drives then newer procedures and things has, I mean, think about like surgery. Have yeah. you ever been to the Mudder Museum? Mm -hmm. You yeah. go down there and those guys were like cutting open dead bodies and they're like, I don't know what we're going to find. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. let's see what this does and, and that. And, and then all, you know, all you had to do back then to be a surgeon was like attend 
a training and you were like, hey, you're a surgeon. Yeah. There was no like board. There was no. And, and of course, safety wise, you know, you know, I nod towards uh, civilization. Like, right. Like that's a, right. We should probably have. So somebody just can't walk in and say, oh, yeah, I'm a surgeon. Yeah. Right. But there's a piece of that that I think has become missing that like. The learning process when you were going through school, like you said, like, hey, we're kind of stuck in this channel yeah. so that we can pass a test based on shit from 10 years ago mm -hmm. versus, like, you know, let's get into some things now. But, yeah. But I think that's really cool. So, and so with that being said, like, it's it's worth the money to pay for an objective eye, even if it's one session, right? Yeah. Like, to have a professional take a look at you. And, you, you know, you may think because that's your prior past, like, it's going to take four, five, six weeks or three times a week. It, it, one person. It, it doesn't have to, whether it's a, you know, a personal trainer, a strength coach, a PT, a chiropractor, a massage therapist, like sometimes it's worth paying for an hour of their time right. to help you streamline things and really get an objective eye on your programming to make sure you, you, you know, you really improve and break through plateaus and you don't get hurt and all that kind of stuff. I think it's a really good point. That'd be like going yeah. to one, going out to dinner one time and being like, oh, this dinner sucked. I'm never going out to dinner again. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's a million different restaurants they have different recipes yeah. of different things just like you do you know yeah you got that standardized you know uh, education but you like you know you pick and choose and right. you've gone to all kinds yep. of other clinics and experience and what do you learn along the way and you're going to be a different chef than that other guy so i think that's good that's a really good point and, and i don't know if you guys like i'll, I'll always pay for some of the program because i'll you'll just gravitate towards what you like ah well right? yeah i mean that's the whole point of i think why I fell in love with CrossFit was yeah. I wasn't doing the shit I liked. I, you know, was like, Ugh, who wants to run and who wants to do for me? Who wanted to do burpees? Yeah, you know? but, but there was enough of the cool stuff in there that I did like. That okay, cool. Yeah, it makes you feel good. But you know, that, yeah, I think CrossFit does a good job with that. Of course, you outside your comfort zone to improve globally. Hopefully, then some of the ancillary stuff helps bulletproof you against like the road. Yeah, yeah. Good. So I wanted to get John's opinion on a. Uh, Case study. Case study, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a client. I'm not going to name him. Um, <laughs> no, you can't. But uh, <laughs> uh, had recently had meniscus surgery, mm -hmm. late 60s, male. Okay. And doctors. Right here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> doctors telling mind. him, you know, no impact, stay away from squats, stay away from activity, yeah. you know, go to, go to uh, you know, PT. Um, and this has kind of scared him in a sense. Yeah. That exercise and this, you know, this this whole surgery he had is scared him into not moving. Yeah. And I'm afraid that's gonna um, that's gonna just lead him down a road of just dysfunction as he ages. Yeah. So give me your opinion on. Yeah. What so you think I, we should I should do it. every case again the N of one. Every case is different. You know, depending on if it was a meniscectomy or, or a meniscal repair, um, that'll come into play. Yeah. Because a meniscectomy that he's now missing some of his meniscus, some of his cushioning, so he's mm -hmm. going to get quicker joint degeneration. Sure. Um, but even that being said, um, you know, depending on how much was taken out, uh, you know, movement, movement is lotion, movement is is healing, movement is medicine. Like, um, yeah, that's healthy. Sure. Yeah. Trade like it. Well, because yeah, you, know, you you increase joint viscosity as you move through the range of your motion. Your body produces your body synovial produces. fluid exactly. as it knows it's starting to move something through range of motion. Like it starts to go, oh, let's put some oil on the joint. So so while he may be predisposed to maybe a quicker joint degeneration, and depending on what it looks like prior to the surgery, he may have already had it, you know, over that age. Um, but at the same time, I think a big problem with our medical community in this country is catastrophizing an injury and scaring people. It's yeah. like what do you think they what doctors do? Though? Think insurance plays a lot of role, or, or do you think they're just scared, no. right? And that goes back to that experimentation thing, where like, hey, you know what? If I tell you the wrong thing, you're gonna come back and yeah. sue me because I told you. But I also think it's a lack of education. So physicians don't get any exercise, and they don't get any. They get like one course of nutrition. So maybe they get one course of wait, what? How many courses of nutrition? Like one. How long's the course? I don't know, semester. I like nutrition semester. one on one. Yeah, but they're they're getting the basics based on like the food pyramid or my plate, whatever it is now. Yeah, I mean, the right. old food pyramid, like yeah. the government wanted you to do. It's subsidized by corn. Um, corn. So so physicians, while they're they're very good, they're they're smart people. Don't believe that's a whole other episode. That's a whole. That's, that's like next, ten episodes. That might be yeah. next week because we have Ross from Kettlebell Kitchen coming in. Yeah, we can. Oh, nice plug. Yeah, 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 you worked at it. I got it. Um, but so so. Physicians, while they're they're very smart, they've all become segmented into their 
um, you know, their section, like your cardiovascular specialist, your orthopedic specialist, and, and a lot of times there's no coordination to take everything into account, right? right. They're looking um, on one piece of the system, and right. maybe they're not so up to date on how those other pieces of the system. Right. And then nutrition and exercise are, are barely mentioned in their course of care, or in their, their education. Unless they, maybe they're an exercise sports science undergrad or something, or they've done a lot of outside reading or they're athletic at, by themselves and they cross for the rank, whatever. Um, so, um, that being said, so the education may not be there. That's, and and their, their experience regarding that is seeing people come in maybe from, from training programs that aren't fitted to the individual like they should be. So they see people loading and not squatting properly that's going to wreck knees, yeah. right? So they're, their prior experience and they don't have this network around them that of trainers they trust to allow to train so they have to make a blanket statement like that. Not don't you squat. shouldn't squat like you that. that. Right. You shouldn't squat. And then they haven't seen them squat in the office. Right. Even you know they're not they're not watching them move, right? Um so I think as physicians will catastrophize like I have twenty six year olds come to the clinic after a knee surgery and the surgeon will tell them never to squat again. 26. She like, catastrophizes things a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oh, we can't ever. Uh, ah, it's the worst. It's, and to me, that that's a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, flagrant. Like you can't tell someone never squat again when they're 30 years old. Right? Right. I don't think you can tell someone to squat again when they're 67 years old. Right. When you're sitting down and hip, up and out of a chair. Yeah. Right. So you it's all off the toilet by yourself. They ship you off to the old folks. So yeah. And the thing. And studies show that if you can't get off the ground, like you're gonna die sooner than people that can get off the ground without their hands, right? So, um, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, without knowing the whole history. Yeah. But I think everybody, there's there's these the system of progressions and regressions, right? Over here, you have a professional athlete, 500 pound squatter, you know, stud, elite, right? Yeah. Over here, you have 60 year old guy who just needs to be able, he needs to be able to yeah. sit up and down off a chair. But he still needs he just, pretty he good still form. Needs to be doing he body weight squats. Yeah. You don't have to load up, but you still need to be needs moving. To be able to move. You need to move. Normal functions of movement. I, and I agree. Yeah. And he's being so. scared out of and because moving. Yeah. because physician said it, it rules, right? So yeah. maybe you should talk to his doctor. Yeah, maybe I mean, we great. should start, start the relationship man. with you and him. Yeah, it, like you could bring him to me or, or start to set up this relationship. Like it, if the doctor doesn't have a trainer or you know someone that he trusts or refer yeah, to we need to start meeting yeah people. yeah like absolutely you need to start having these networks of people um like we talked about the integrated model like you guys have you know 10 people that you know maybe i'm not the right pt for some people but you have another pt who you know be really what good with this person Same yeah guy. you guys have three or four chiropractors you refer to like you start to pick and choose and you know, we shouldn't have egos in the process. Like, you know what, Steve? I trust you. Like, if you feel like they're not the best person for me, like, send them to someone else. Like, right. it's fine. Like, it's no big deal. Like, business will come. There's enough people hurt. Yeah. You know? Sure. Um, sure. Awesome. Cool. John, thanks so much for being on our episode. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. So we'll, yeah. put, uh, we'll put a link to John at the training room um, and his business. And if you have any questions, you can post them here. Maybe John will go back and look at them, and maybe he can shoot you a quick answer if it's not something super crazy. Um, is there a – how do we – what if I want to come see? What do I got to do? Yeah, so you, um, the Training Room PT online is our website. Okay. Um, the I'll Training Room – up there. Thank you. The Training Room Garnet Valley. Um, you can also search that. You'll find us. I'm pretty active on social media. John Herding on Instagram, Facebook, a lot of good posts. Twitter. Choice. Yeah, so – um, it's it's pretty easy to find me. Okay, yeah, cool. Thank you. And I like sending people because I know that you know what we do here. Yeah. And you know, and you send someone somewhere else, and so many they times they're like, oh, "Oh, you did CrossFit. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. My God, you got to die." Don't do that. Like, CrossFit oh. inherently ah. isn't bad, right? Right. It's, but there are bad coaches and bad gyms yep. with bad programming, and, mm -hmm. and we get that. We try, and I think one of the cool things with our new you challenge is that we get to be in front of a demographic that not, might not normally seek us out. Right. We kind of are seeking them out through our media advertising, and then they're kind of like, oh, what's this challenge? And it gives them a taste of like, hey, this is how we train. Like, you know, yeah. this is what we do at our gym. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Uh, so, Jimmy, we got any uh, housekeeping stuff? What do we got? We got, we got a couple things. Up? Let me check out the show notes. All right, check out the show notes, Jim. Uh, well, it happened here, Steve. Oh, we got a lot of deadlift PRs today. We got today. deadlifts today. We got Morgan Jaffe on the 300 pounds deadlift mark. That's, nice that's job. a game changer, I think. Yeah. This gym. 
Uh, Kevin Griffin from the legendary 7.30 a.m. clash. 4.35 deadlift. 4.35. Yeah. All right. So that's just a few. Um, got a lot more classes today, a lot more PRs to hit. Rebecca, and I can't remember her last name. Oh, She's Becca. just a new, uh, newer member with us. I know she got her last... I think PR was 133. Okay, she cool. did 153 today. Yeah, so that was a, that was a big deal. For awesome. Her. Yeah. yeah. So all with good technique too. All with good technique. Awesome. Uh, we have barbells um, for boobs coming up November 11th. And John, we've invited you to come to barbells for boobs if yep. you can make it. We'd love to have you. Um, and then Jim, let's have this big announcement. All right, Steve. CrossFit <laughs> Westchester is going to be in the Westchester Halloween Parade. So Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. Here we go. There it is. There it We're is. in. We're gonna yeah. do it. We're doing it. We're gonna do it. All right. Uh, so that's Wednesday, October twenty fifth. The cheerleading performance. Uh, you know what you guys are doing? No, we're, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah, that's Steve. I might do oh, that. Steve's right. gonna do that. I will bring my pom poms. So I guess the I the plan for this parade is that we're gonna. Pull the well, wagon. listen. I don't we know. Don't wanna, we don't want to say too much right away. now. But here's what we need, Jim. What do we need, Steve? We are definitely doing this Halloween parade. Definitely. Here's why. We've heard from the channels, from the peanut gallery, that we haven't been doing enough fun activities together. Right. I think this is a great community event that we can do. It'll be fun. So it'll be fun. Um, we're And, of course, we want to promote the gym and kind of be out there. Yeah. We talked about it, like, every year. And, like, one, I think we always forget. We, and then by we the time good, we, we were it, about to do it one it's year. Like late. There was a rain. rain. There was a rain out. There was no uh, right. makeup date. Right. So this year there is a rain date. Yeah. The next day. So what we need is we're going to need some volunteers that want to help us out with this. We would love to have uh, some kids that are going to be on the float, and of course we're going to be doing some other things. So we need some like uh, we'd also need a truck and a flatbed trailer. All right. So we're looking for those things. Maybe Ron Wilkerson can help <laughs> us with that. Ron, if you're watching or listening. Um, and then we can hang some banners, and if anybody wants to promote some things, we can be on there. Uh, but we're going to do it. We're doing it. All right. It's going to be fun. Okay. And that, what's the date of that? That's Wednesday, October 25th. All right. And then after that, oh. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So, and then November 11th, the next month, we're having barbells for boobs. Yep. December will be our annual... Christmas party, PJ Willahan. PJ Willahan's. I've got some ideas for that. Oh, that'll be oh, exciting. We should start discussing <laughs> that. We got to plan early for that. I know. Is this? It's not Black Tie Year. That should no, be no, no. Tenth that's year. ten year. Ten year. We're doing. Black I think we're going on a CrossFit cruise. A cruise on ten years. I think we should do it. Now you're getting out of control. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you need to take medical staff with you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be invited. Yeah. Kelly, got anything from our studio the audience? audience? Derek. Derek? Derek. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, put on the spot. All right, everybody. All right. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Don't forget, we put this from our Facebook page, excuse me, onto our YouTube channel. We'll put some links to the tra uh, training room so you can get a hold of John. John, thanks again for coming in. Thanks yeah, for having great me. Great stuff. Uh, we'll love to do your round work. Two. Yeah, we'd love to do round yeah. two. Yeah. Um, we'll put a link to that exercise that you talked about, yep. the number one thing you think people should be doing. And I don't know, we'll see you. Next Thursday. All right. Jimmy and Steve. Jimmy and Steve. Oh, Jim with Jimmy and Steve. I forget how we get out of this, Jim. <laughs> no, we hit the finish button. All right, go. bye, everybody. All right, see ya. Yeah.